discuss us about second part of electoral politics the topic is election campaign the election campaign are conducted to have a free and open discussion about who is the better representative and in turn which party will make a better government in india election campaign take place for a two week period between the announcement of the final list of candidates and the date of polling during this period the candidates contact their voters political leaders address election meetings and political parties mobilize their supporters some of the successful slogans given by different political parties in various elections first one save democracy second one land to the tiller third one protect the self respect of the telugus according to india's election law no party or candidate can first one bribe or threaten voters second one appeal to them in the name of caste or religion third one use government resources for election campaign fourth one spend more than 25 lakhs in a constituency for a lok sabha election or 10 lakhs in a constituency in an assembly election if any political party does so their election can be rejected by the court in addition to the laws all the political parties in our country have agreed to a model code of conduct for election campaign according to this no party or candidates can first one use any place of worship for election propaganda second one use government vehicles aircraft and official for elections third one once elections are announced ministers shall not lay foundation stones of any projects take any big policy decisions or make any promises of providing public facilities after that i would like to talk about polling and counting of votes the day when the voters cast or poll their vote is called the election day the voting is done in the following manner first one every person whose name is on the voters list can go to a nearby polling booth second one was the voter goes inside the booth the election official identity her put a mark on her finger and allow her to cast her vote third one an agent of each candidate is allowed to sit inside the polling booth and ensure that the voting takes place in a fair way a ballot paper is a sheet of paper on which the names of contesting candidates along with party names and symbols are listed the ballot paper was used earlier nowadays electronic voting machines in short abbreviation evm are used to record votes first one the machine shows the name of the candidates and the party symbols second one the voter has to just press the button against the name of the candidate she wants to give her vote to third one once the polling is over all the evms are sealed and taken to a secure place fourth one a few days later all the evms yes are opened and the votes secured by each candidates are counted last one the candidate who secured the highest number of votes for a constituency is declared elected after that i would like to talk about what makes election in india democratic independent indian election commission in india elections are conducted by election commission in short abbreviation ec the chief election commissioner in short abbreviation ce c is appointed by the president of india election commission is independent and has a wide range of powers which are first one ec takes decision on every aspect of conduct and control of elections from the announcement of elections to the declaration of results second one it implements the code of conduct and punishes and candidate or party that violates it third one during the election period the ec can order the government to follow some guidelines to prevent the use and misuse of governmental power to enhance its chances to win elections or transfer to some government officials first fourth one when on election duty government offers officers work under the control of the election commissioner and not the government second one i would like to talk about population participation the role of participation of popular uh, in a democratic country is very important the quality of election process can also be checked by seeing the participation of people people's participation is elect in election is measured by voter 
turnout figures. Turnout indicates the percent of eligible voters who actually cost their votes. First one, in India, the poor, the illiterate and underprivileged people vote in large proportion as compared to the rich and privileged as selection. Common people in India feel that through elections, they can bring pressure on political parties to adopt policies and programs favorable to them. Third one, the interest of voters in election related activities has been increasing over the years. After that, I would like to talk about acceptance of election outcome. One final test of the free and fairness of election is outcome of the election. First one, the ruling parties routinely lose elections in India both by the national and state level. Second one, in the US, an incumbent bet or sitting elected representative rarely loses an election. In India, about half of the sitting of the MPs or MLA lose elections. Candidates who are known to have spent a lot of money are buying votes and those with known criminals connections often lose elections. Bearing very few disputed elected electoral outcomes are usually accepted as people verdict by the defeated party. After that, I would like to talk about very important topics, challenges to free and fair elections. This is a very important, really, topics. In, in Under it, elections in India are basically free and fair. Sometimes, this may not be true for every constituency. There are many limitations and challenges to Indian elections. These include, first one, candidates and, and parties with a lot of money enjoy a big and unfair advantage over a smaller party. Second one, candidates with criminal connections have been able to push others out of the electoral race and to secure a ticket from major parties. Third one, tickets are distributed to relatives from their families. Fourth one, elections offer little choice to ordinary citizen as major parties are quite similar to each other, both in policies and practices. Last one, smaller parties and independent candidates suffer a huge disadvantage compared to bigger parties. Students are advised to do NCRT questions and one more long questions on that topic. Thank you.